what is long COVID? There are lots of different names for this. There are long haulers, post-acute COVID, post-COVID condition, chronic COVID, is it even real? But since the pandemic has begun, it's become clear that there are a lot of people facing this thing called long COVID. My name is Riti Kare, and I am going to be giving a whirlwind tour of the what, the who, the why, and the how of long COVID. So what is it? The short answer is that it's a constellation of symptoms that don't resolve or resolve and then relapse even months after an acute SARS-CoV-2 infection. There are better, more official definitions than this from the WHO, from NICE in the UK, from CDC in the US, and they all kind of say the same thing, that long COVID is a set of symptoms that um, continue or develop and last a really long time. The time doesn't always match between these different definitions, which is part of the problem, but they can all agree that it lasts at least a month to many months after that initial SARS-CoV-2 infection. Another difficulty with long COVID is that not all patients are experiencing the same thing. You have some patients that are experiencing just a continuation of a respiratory disease. So they'll get cough, shortness of breath, maybe they'll still have fevers. Others will experience just this extreme exhaustion. And then there's this whole other set of symptoms that fall into kind of more of a neurologic category. Um, the primary one is brain fog, where they just can't remember things the way they used to. But then there's also sleep disruption and anxiety and dizziness and depression. Most people with long COVID say that they show at least three or more of these symptoms. So there have been a few studies and surveys, like two summarized here from the UK and the US, um, where they've tried to assess the impact of long COVID on a patient's quality of life. Um, what these surveys showed is about a fifth of patients say their long COVID uh, symptoms don't really have an effect on their day-to-day -day life. So maybe they had loss of a sense of smell, maybe that's okay. About 50% of patients though said their symptoms do have some sort of limitations in their day-to-day -day activities, but as many as a quarter of them say it had has significant limitations on their day-to-day -day activities. So when you look at data like this, it looks kind of sterile, kind of black and white, but when you hear testimonials from people who have experienced long COVID, the descriptions can be pretty dramatic. You essentially start with these very previously healthy, active um, people who now describe um, not being able to do pretty simple things. They can't do the things that they love. They can't go to work, so they can't earn. Um, they describe their bodies as feeling broken or crumbling. Um, even their children will describe that they had previously very active, engaged parents that now can't do simple things with them, like go on a walk because they are bedridden. So who is getting long COVID? Turns out, a lot of people, actually. So as um, in the past couple of years, as many as 40% of the American population has had COVID. And CDC estimates that about one in five of them experienced long COVID. That's just CDC estimates. If you think about different studies with different definitions, those um, ranges could be anywhere from 10 to 30%. That's a huge number. And keep in mind that just because people don't get long COVID on their first exposure to SARS-CoV-2, they can get it on subsequent exposures. Also, um, although we mostly see long COVID in, uh, in adults, kids can get it too. However, there are some risk factors associated with long COVID based on a meta-analysis of several studies looking at this. One of the primary risk factors associated with long COVID is people identifying as female. Other risk factors are people over the age of 40, as well as smokers. Silver lining though, is that vaccination does appear to decrease the risk of long COVID. Okay, so what is happening? What is causing long COVID? Um, the disease is of course still pretty new. We don't have all the answers, but we have some hypotheses. One of them is that long COVID is just a manifestation of organ damage that was caused by that acute SARS-CoV-2 infection. 
Um, for example, we know that SARS-CoV-2 can cause damage to the lungs and that can cause scarring, um, which can take some time to heal and that can cause that persistent shortness of breath. We also know that it can cause inflammation in the heart, can cause heart palpitations. All those things can also lead to persistent shortness of breath um, and that extreme fatigue. Another hypothesis is a potential viral persistence. That means that virus is sticking around somewhere in the body um, as some sort of reservoir, and that's causing persistent chronic inflammation that's resulting in all of these symptoms. Um, this is potentially supported by this idea that um, viruses can stick around for a while. For example, we now know that RNA viruses, initially thought to be pretty transient, can stick around for months to years after that initial infection. For example, Zika virus can do that, measles virus can do that. Now we know that SARS-CoV-2 can do it as well. For example, we found both viral proteins as, as well as viral nucleic acids in virtually every organ of the body, as well as body fluids, fat, CSF, stool, again, many months after that initial infection. So if it is this idea of a viral reservoir causing chronic inflammation, is it possible that viral therapeutics, so for example, antivirals or vaccines against the virus that are delivered during the period of long COVID can help alleviate symptoms? That's a possibility. We don't know that yet. We'll have to test that. Or perhaps long COVID is a disease of autoimmunity. We know that people with um, long COVID have elevated autoimmune antibodies, um, so antibodies formed against self. Um, that may explain why we see long COVID more prevalent in women who tend to be more susceptible to autoimmune disorders, perhaps because women contain two X chromosomes that carry a lot of genes for immunity or it's something completely different. Um, it, we know that the ACE2 um, protein is expressed at high levels in the gut. That's a receptor for SARS-CoV-2. We also know that the gut is involved in regulating mood and reducing chronic inflammation. And now there's evidence to suggest that people who have had SARS-CoV-2 infection actually have a dysregulated gut microflora. Or it could be that there are other things reactivating during COVID. For example, we know that EBV, Epstein-Barr virus, is a DNA virus that most of us get when we're little kids. Um, we don't get super sick from it. The symptoms go away. But that virus can stick around in us for essentially our whole lives. It can reactivate. Um, we don't really know the triggers, but if it reactivates during COVID, we found that those people tend to have higher levels of inflammation, have higher risk of mortality, and tend to progress more to long COVID. Or it's something completely different where the virus affects the central nervous system, specifically the vagus nerve function, and causes this overall sick response. So what do we do about it? How do we manage long COVID? Of course, we need that continual research, right? We still don't really know how to diagnose it. There are people looking into um, this, the cytokine profile to see is there a group of cytokines that is diagnostic of long COVID. Another thing we can look at is microclots. Microclots appear to be more numerous and larger and uh, that are circula circulating in um, the body in people with long COVID. So we really need that um, additional research in order to diagnose and therefore um, figure out how to treat that disease. Another thing that we know helps is time. About 90% of people who have experienced long COVID say that their symptoms resolve within a year. So we know that it's a self-limited disease, albeit a pretty long one. And then another thing that we can do is help manage symptoms. Um, for example, pacing is a strategy that a lot of people with chronic conditions use like uh, chronic fatigue syndrome. Um, that's essentially a strategy of interleaving periods of exertion with periods of rest so that patient never hits that point of exhaustion. Ultimately, it's probably going to be a combination of all of those different things causing long COVID and ultimately it's gonna be a, a combination of these different strategies that's gonna help us uh, be able to manage and help alleviate symptoms of long COVID. So with that, I'm gonna wrap up here. 
I encourage you guys to um, read my book, The Guide to Clinical and Diagnostic um, Virology. It came out right before COVID, so it's not gonna have COVID, but it'll have um, a lot of stuff about other viruses. Thank you. Thank you.